it's time for an unboxing video. For a long time, I've wanted some of these. And now I've got some. Radian. Radian are a manufacturer of router bits in the UK. So they took some time to get here. And it has to be said, they're not cheap. But, you know, if you're in America, you've got the same issue with white side bits. The good ones are quite expensive. So that's life. And I've got two bits. That's all my, all my budget could afford. Okay, so they're covered in this rubber type plastic coating, which is fine. Better than fine, it's good. So I've got a 45 degree chamfer bit, or a bevel bit, they seem to go by both names. This has three blades, three flutes, as they're called. I'm not going to be using that just now, because it just doesn't happen to work with the, with the guitar that I put together for this purpose. I am... Um, As I was browsing the bits, I realized that I, I didn't actually need them for any of the guitars that I was already building. So I put together a new guitar uh, to start building just for the purpose of using this bit. And this is it. This is this one has me curious. I will put the proper name of it on the screen because I don't recall it just now. It's it's got a it's got a bearing to guide it. Yeah, I'll how do you get this rubber off? I guess you have to cut it off. Hmm. The first challenge. Yeah, I'll do that first. Okay, if you know what a cove bit is, you'll know that this is very similar to a cove bit, but a cove bit is more, well the radius is more circular, whereas this is more flattened out. I think it was called a, a they call it a bull nose or, or something, but it's guided by a bearing and it's specifically for carving the edge of a guitar top to give it that, I was going to say to give it that carved look, no, no to make it actually carved. Um, so that is what I'm going to do with it. This one has four flutes. The beauty of radian bits is, I'm told, and so they tell me, uh, in the number of flutes. You know, most cove bits that you would buy have two flutes, and they do an okay job, but these are supposed to create a very smooth finish, largely on account of the quality and number of cutting flutes that they have. So... There's not that much more to say other than let's give this a go. So I built a guitar just to do this on. It's going to be, and I guess this is a little bit unusual, it's going to be a carved Telecaster style body. Not quite Tele, there's some, there are some different shapes going on here. But you don't usually see a Telecaster style guitar with a carved top. I have seen a couple, but not many. Right. Um, I have only one router that has a half inch collet, but I'm thinking that particular router, even though it's a good router, may give me some issues here. I'll show you why. So I'll be using my Triton router, and look, I swear, because I'm a fan of Crimson Guitars, I swear that Crimson Guitars has enabled Triton to sell more of these routers than any other promoter and more radian bits as well because they use them and well they make them look good so here's another example of just that um, however uh, this router might not be the best way to do this routing because you see this horn here I mean it's not super narrow as far as horns go but as the router becomes perched on the end of that horn it may start to as you can see 
I start to become a bit precarious, especially as I start routing away the corner there so the surface area on which to sit becomes smaller and smaller. So through no fault of this router, I probably won't use it. I will probably put the bit into my router table where I can sit the guitar on its top, which will be much more stable. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Apologies for the noise. The lawn is currently being mowed. So the first pass will be very shallow, as you can see. Okay, and that's definitely, that is very smooth. A couple of slight rough patches, but that's, so it's very smooth when it's going with the grain, but as it, as it starts to cross the grain, especially there, it gets slightly rougher, and there's even a burn there. Bear in mind, this is purple hard, so it's very hard wood. So I will have to sand that, but um, it looks pretty good, feels good. It's difficult to compare it to anything else because I've never, I've never routed purple heart like this before. I have used a code bit on the elm topped strat, and that wasn't as smooth as this, even though it's a softer wood. So this is quite impressive, quite impressive. It's just difficult. It is somewhat difficult to do on a router table because you can't. You know, as you can see, with the guitar sitting here, you can't see where it's making contact, so it's difficult to be as precise, which does raise a safety issue, but um, that's routed tables in general, unfortunately. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, I'm just stopping every now and then to admire it and this part here I think is going to be the most challenging because I'm going across the end grain but it can't really be avoided so let's just press on. It was definitely the right move to start with quite a shallow pass. Um, I wouldn't have wanted to try anything deeper than that. Okay, I'm going straight across the grain there, and there's a little bit of burn, but not much. So that isn't bad. Well, that's an understatement. It is actually really, really good, but the burn isn't bad. The quality of the cup is excellent. Just a, a note, of, because this is quite a large bit in terms of its diameter, I've turned the speed of this router down to the very lowest, to one. I assume that's the lowest. Yeah, one is the lowest, so I've done that. You shouldn't have a, a very large bit trying to go maximum RPMs. Okay. I'm trying to think about whether or not I should try doing it in that, I mean, I suppose I should do it there. Um, yeah, I will. That's going to be the tricky spot, though. Just because, I mean, it would be nice if I could sit my router there, but maybe I will. Should I try that? Maybe that would be the way to go. Let's see. Now that spot's the only one remaining, so I guess I just... I 
have a healthy fear of routers, so bear with me. This is the one on which I injured myself, so I'm super cautious. Uh, way back in 2016, that was. Super cautious about it. Just that tiny spot to go, but it is going to be the trickiest one. Okay. How well can you see? There you go. I have circumnavigated the globe. In general, in general, what are we seeing here? Well, not in general, all the way. This is very smooth. Um, there is no roughness at all, except for the occasional spot. There's a tiny bit of roughness there when it starts to go cross-grain. There's a bit of roughness there. Um, I intentionally picked a difficult subject, Purple Heart Wood. So I'm, I'm going to continue. I'll just go over some parts of this again, and then I will lower the bit and do a second deeper pass. Okay, I mean that's good, uh, that's very good. That's probably as deep as I want to go as well. Um, I'll show you a couple of things that I, well one thing in particular that I especially like about this. Okay, so how do things look? Um, they look good, I think I basically mentioned that already. It's very smooth all the way around, that alone, well that's kind of why I bought this bit. This very impressive looking bit. It's got a double bearings, so two bearings there. So that's that's a reassuring feature. I mean, they're quite small bearings, but that, I don't know, it was, when it's just one bearing, I always worry that there's not quite enough riding along the side of the wood, but there's plenty there. And it just, I mean, it's heavy. It looks like it's well made. I know that's a very subjective judgment. It is well made, obviously. The blades are very sharp. I've begun uh, using the sander, but I'll do it by hand as well. Uh, sanding off that ridge to soften that transition, that'll be no trouble. One of the things I like about the shape of this, and one of the reasons why I wasn't happy just using a cove bit, is that the bottom of the, what do you call that? <sighs> I don't know, the bottom of the profile, we'll call it that, is almost flat. And that's quite useful here because I haven't decided for sure yet, but I think I'm likely to put a single layer of cream binding around this top. And having a, a somewhat flat surface there for the scraping will make life much easier. So I like that. Um, as I said, there, there are some small amounts of burn on this, uh, namely where you're going anytime where you're starting to go across the grain. When you're going directly across the grain, that's when you've got the most. Although not so much over here, I suppose there is. Yeah, there is. Um, but that is to be expected. Um, you know, especially with a very hard wood like this. I, I, I think with a softer wood, like, I don't know, Limu, Tawa, any of the other woods I sometimes use, I'm less likely to get that because they're nowhere near as hard as Purple Heart. The sanding effort involved here has been quite minimal. I've just been focusing on the areas where there is visible burn, and that's going to take a bit of rubbing out, but the rest of this was already quite smooth, so that has been 
a pretty simple affair. So on the whole, should you buy one of these? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they're expensive. They're in the neighborhood of 70 pounds. That works out to quite a bit in New Zealand dollars. But at least I think that's the the cost. I'll, I'll be putting the price on the screen from their website, so you'll see that. But um, I think it's worth it. I mean, one of the selling points listed on the website is that it is long lasting. Lasts longer than other bits. If that's true, like it was you know, built to last, I think it was several times longer. If that's true, then that makes it worth it by itself, I suppose. But just the quality of the cut, um, I haven't seen anything that can do that before. I'm not saying nothing else can do that. Um, I am going to do an unboxing and review of a cheap Chinese bit, a roundover bit that has four cutting flutes, just to see how that compares. So watch this space, that should be fun. But yeah, that's a, that's a wrap. I am impressed.